Okay, we are coming now to, the, to our second session of today, which is about game-changing emerging technologies. So, as you are well aware, the UPU, with its members, uh, has been regularly studying and analyzing and researching new technologies and also opportunities, uh, such as the potential of uh, innovative solutions in the, postal, in the area of postal digital financial services, in the area of artificial intelligence, or the la latest uh, research piece that we, that we have seen, opportunities in the area of blockchain. Um, we all know also that emerging technologies have really the power to reshape our industry in a way that has not been possible before. So, for example, interest in blockchain and in other uh, distributed ledger technologies has been growing over the past few years, and more and more posts are experimenting and trying to find different use cases for these new technologies. So, we'll discuss here with our panelists in this uh, second session how emerging <coughs> technologies can help the postal ecosystem to create an even stronger network and to seize also unique opportunities for the posts, their customers, and societies alike. So, let me introduce the panelists that he ha we have here with us. We have Saleh Khan, he's the program manager of financial inclusion at the UPU. We have Anissa Kaltani, she's the CEO of uh, Alpenia Post. We have Ian Strohler, he's partner at Analysis Mason. And we have Ricardo Simoes, executive director from the International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications. And as in our first session, we also start here with a few interventions from our panelists and we'll then start the discussion. So may I ask Saleh maybe that you take the floor first, please. Thank you very much, Bernard, for that. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me to be here and, and addressing all of you on um, the kind of work that we're doing at the UPU on emerging technologies and, and the kind of research that we actually want to lay for our partners going forward. Um, so if you look at this slide, it gives you a gamut of the kind of work that we're doing in the financial inclusion research space. And I will sl I'll start with financial inclusion because that is a program I had at the UPU. But um, in the end, you'll see that we are touching upon a, a number of vital postal areas when we go forward. So when, when we started our journey at looking at you know, what we call over the horizon visioning at UPU, our plan is to look at the kind of technologies and, and solutions that's emerging that will benefit our um, partner posts in the years to come. And our mandate at the UPU is to sort of lay the groundwork, the kind of, um, I would say, that the, the, the kind of thoughts um, and, and the kind of blueprints that you need to implement all of these solutions and technologies, and look at the pros and cons as you go about it. So from a <coughs> research perspective, we started with looking at a very esoteric and interesting topic. What is the role of trust in postal systems and post offices in building up a digital financial system? And we found that, that you know, given the, like, like our colleague in, in Zimpos was saying, the role of the post is so embedded in society that you are inherently a part of the fabric of society. And, and people trust the postal system to deliver a wide range of goods and services, including um, financial services and digital financial services. So what we posited in our research is that if you improve and increase your trust with communities, um, with people, then your uptake in digital financial services will actually be um, positively impacted. That, that's what we started with. Then we looked at the drivers of innovation for postal digital financial services, and we will touch upon this very briefly in the next slides. We looked at the use of cryptocurrencies um, by post. This was part of our working group with the ITU. Um, we are part of the digital work, um, currency working group at the ITU, and, and we did a white paper to again, posit what could be the use of cryptocurrencies in the post. All of this is available for download on our website, and I invite all of you to take a look at it. The fourth paper that we just published is around the use of blockchains in enabling a postal future, a uh, sustainable postal future, and we will talk about this again in the next slides, and we looked at both postal logistics as well as postal financial services to see what the value proposition is. And in our roadmap coming ahead, uh, we want to look at the triangles between posts, 
digital financial services and SMEs, as well as digital financial services posts and gender inclusion um, in, in the coming um, months and years, and, and we will be publishing these. So looking at um, the first um, study that we did on innovating postal financial services, we looked at the postal digital journey, which again, um, some of our colleagues spoke about before. Paul is our expert on, on postal digitization. And what we try to do is bring his perspective onto financial services and inclusive financial services. And we found that the postal digital journey is actually in four um, steps. And across 192 member countries that we have, one of the challenges that we face is that this is a non-homogeneous cohort. Um, so people are at different levels of digitization. And so our interventions have to be paced in a way that is actually commensurate to the digital maturity of the post, and, and we work with them in these levels. And what we did was then talking to both internal participants at the post and to the ecosystem players, we find that there are six major levers for driving postal financial services innovation. And those factors are which the post can control themselves, which is around people, processes, and customers. And then you have the factors that is outside their controls, largely around policy regulations, markets, and emerging technologies. And, and we focus at emerging technologies on the next um, topic, as, as always. So this is the critical one that, that actually brought Bernard and, and us in contact um, to, to present at this panel. And we looked at what have the polls been doing? What have all the polls been doing around the world in terms of blockchains and DLTs? And we find that at least seven posts have conducted 14 different projects around the world. Of course, what's missing here is now the poster child for blockchain uh, in the postal sector, Simba from La Poste France. Um, that was not so visible when we were doing the research. But you will see that these posts have done, at some level, some kind of analysis um, and some kinds of pilots. And, and so we find that within the postal ecosystem, there is an appetite for exploring this topic. Um, there is an appetite for seeing what can be done um, in terms of leveraging DLTs and blockchains to, to benefit the postal customers, and in terms of innovating the kind of solutions that can be brought to market through the post. Now, this study actually focused on two different ax uh, axes. One was to see how blockchains can benefit postal logistics, which is the core business of the post, and then how can blockchains benefit um, postal financial services. So from a postal logistics perspective, we find six potential use cases around you know, blockchaining, if you will, um, the certificates of origin, digital PO boxes, crypto stamps, which is probably the most mature case right now, um, reverse logistics, customs and handling, track and trace. These are the six areas that we thought were the most um, potent, potential, and useful cases for using blockchain within the postal logistics ecosystem. And um, in our study, we explored this in some detail, and we posit what the potential opportunities are for each one of them. For postal financial inclusion, we identified seven potential use cases. Of course, this is my area, so I can talk a bit more about it. Um, we find that collective insurance, managing direct cash transfer projects, digital wallets using DLTs, person to government payments, identity management, remittances, and transactional information management are the most potential use cases. You'll see the stars next to identity management, my, uh, direct cash transfer projects and remittances. We've actually developed blockchain blueprints for these three areas. So these are detailed blueprints that posts can use in designing their own blockchain-enabled uh, products and services. We are about to launch this. We, we hope to launch this within the next few months. And what we hope to do is spur um, our postal partners to think about implementing these blockchain projects. We want to twin them with potential investors and donors, and we want to start um, pilot projects around these um, if we can. So that's, that's in a nutshell where we are in terms of our research, in terms of our thinking, and in terms of what we want to do with our core partners um, going forward. So thank you very much. Bernard, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, please. Anissa, our second speaker. So, good morning, everyone. 
I have decided to open my speech in different languages just to show the power of UPU representing 197 countries. So Mirmjes is in Albanian for everyone. Saba Al Kayar, I don't know if the pronunciation is okay, but Arabic. Guten Morgen, Goye More, Merhaba, Bonjour, Dobre Utre, Buenos Dias, and so many other languages. That's the power of UPU. And I would like very much to know how many uh, representatives from postal operators are in this room. The only thing in common that we have is that we do speak the same language. And that is how we understand each other in each of the challenges that we are facing, uh, the governors that we need to meet every day to change policies, and at the same time regarding the regulations that you all know. My presentation right now is simple. It offers a simple question, actually, digital versus analog. I didn't went through a typical template of uh, the post, traditional post, but I'm going to open up a speech, actually, with some uh, key concerns about the good side of being digital and the normal side of being analog. So right now, most of the posts have succeeded by being analog because the target group that we, uh, we have, the customers that we purchase, are basically the ones that are above 45 years old. So when it comes to customer retention and customer target, that makes a difference in the sense of drafting the necessary strategies among us. Of course, that we do believe that the benefits of uh, digital transformations are a lot. Of course, that there are enhanced data collection, stronger resource management, data-driven insights, something that some uh, operators are missing. Of course, that we consider better customer experience if we go completely digital. We have an increased agility that we don't know whether our teams are able to transform themselves into an agile company. And at the same time, it increased productivity. Those are the benefits of basically being a digital company. But from the other side, we have the traditional. We were so good during the COVID area. We were the only one up in the market serving our customers, serving the people. And it was the only human touch that during the COVID area most of us faced was the postman. The postman is everywhere in each of our front offices, is the one who knows the story of the customer, something that companies nowadays, even though they are digital, are spending millions of money and euros just to have this customer experience and customer targeted. Are we eager to be transformed completely into a digital company? Or is it okay that we switch through this analog to digital more smoothly? Imagine ourselves nowadays with, uh, with a postman completely in a hologram coming to your front office and bringing you a pack. Is that human touch that valuable? And I think this is the question that each of the postal operators, but not only, even the companies, need to take in consideration while they offer good, uh, good trends, let's say, and good customer experience for our companies. Of course, that the postal sector has been going through different ways of change, and we already know the steps that we were following. 1990s to 2005, there was productivity and diversification. So those the two areas where post basically focused themselves by being more into automation processes. And of course, that we moved on up to 2015, digital to core, because we wanted ourselves to be more involved into transforming our companies and providing those digital tools at the core of our businesses. And of course, that 2015 and onward is this digital as a mindset. But what does it mean, digital as a mindset? Are we ready to change the social attitudes of our companies and people that we serve, as well as customers? And at the same time, is our purpose the same if we completely being are transformed into someone digital? Do we speak the same language? Are we the same as our main competitor? I don't want to mention names, but we know who are our competitors. They are very keen because they are very structured. They don't care about rules. They have all the things outsourced. They live in this circular economy that we think that we provide these circular economy assets, but I believe that our competitors are better doing it. And of course, 
that most of our competitors speak with the same language, the same brand identity, the same offset of the stores. Of course, they are one-stop shop, they offer one exclusive uh, services, and that's why they are very successful in the market and they are getting these customers from us. While we, we believe to be one-stop shop for most of our customers, but we are not defined whether we are exclusively number one in postal sector or are we tending to move as exclusively number one in financial services and offering the inclusion for, uh, for different target groups that we have. And then we come to e-commerce. Most of the companies think about e-commerce, and that's the power of us as mobile operators. Uh, personally, I am critical a little bit about the processes of e-commerce in different countries. Why? Because we are providing kind of marketplace, differentiated marketplace. While the UPU should offer a platform for all operators to speak the same language and become one marketplace. It's not being the best among many, it's being the best among many bests that we have. So if we want to compete with our main competitor, that is also part of uh, the panel tomorrow discussion, are we eager to be the same as him? To speak the same language, provide the same uh, attitudes and stuff? What we did in Albania, of course that we are working for e-commerce, and especially in automation of the parcel processing, continued innovation receiver apps and integration with operational systems. But what we did is that we want to boost sales through the app. So we didn't define actually us being analog, us being transformed into digital tools, but we wanted to have a targeted audience mission, which means that we want to speak to real humans, no fake emails, as many other providers are doing, no multiple accounts. So every marketplace you go, you got multiple accounts, and then you forget the password, <laughs> and you, can you cannot proceed the payment. It's the same like PayPal. Why PayPal was very successful? All your accounts are with one username and account. And that's the reason why the e-commerce should be a marketplace driven by UPU that speaks the same language for all the mobile operators. And of course, that we want to have real-time segmentation in different countries based on the customer behavior. We need to have website browsing behaviors that if we speak the same language might be the same, but if we are different, they are different customer behaviors. And at the same time, we want to boost our return on invest investments based on customer journeys. How many mobile uh, of operators right here, postal operators, do care about the customer journey? We just consider the customer coming in our office, making a transaction, and leaving. We don't have that much data analytics behind the services that we offer in our uh, shops, and that's the reason why the post is still linked with the government rather than being a completely sustainable, self-sufficient company which cares about profits and not about just offering the universal services. Then it comes to postal retail. Of course, this is one of the big challenges, knowing the fact that with the e-commerce and with the things that all the governments are now moving into completely digital area. So, the momentum for delivering the letter and papers, it's not on our side. Which means there is the reason why we need to be transformed into a complete digital company. Which means logistic need to be improved, we need to offer banking services, and of course the concept of digital box might be one of the areas that most of us should target while we face a decrease, a decline in our services. And then, when I speak about new trends, of course, that I take in consideration the fact that I do care about customer experience, because even though the position of CEO of a company uh, is linked with uh, the governor, uh, I believe that post, uh, posts need to be considered real business, which means that we need to care about the customer journey, we need to care about customer experience, we need to care about Internet of Things. Customers want us to be uh, with physical front offices, but at the same time they want us to provide the services immediately linked also to the banking sector. And of course that with the drones, I believe that Albania is one of the, one of 
the few countries actually, which is experiencing right now uh, the first legislation which allows the drones actually to be linked with the postal operation. And that's the reason why we have made the first testing of drones. And very soon we are going to launch it uh, in Albania and become a uh, motor momentum actually also for other operators to, to join. I think that my timing is off because it's zero, 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 but this is one of the things that uh, uh, makes a big difference for our companies, the drones, and it's touchable. People would love it. Why? Because it's modern. And everyone would love to have a drone and something being delivered in his balcony because that is a good story for Instagram and Facebook, not for the services. So we need to change a little bit the mentality of all the products and services that we are offering. And that's the reason why we move to dedicated app, offering one-stop shop. So all the customers in Albania, and not only, they can pay their utility bills and everything else through a unique app that I think most of the operators already have uh, in place. But what did change? We are very keen and we are very much looking to host a big event in the upcoming January uh, by launching, launching the first social card uh, targeting the pensioners, the retirees. We have more than 800,000 customers, actually, that are basically our customers that don't care about digitalization. They care about getting the money and on the safe hands of a postman or on the safe side of a post office. Of course, that we believe that posts are the second biggest contributor to financial inclusion worldwide. This is statistics. Post enables and provides infrastructure for rural developments, something that our competitors even imagine to go through. Uh, we have trust, and that is one of the things that I do believe Mr. Khan already expressed is uh, basically our absolute advantage in the market. And post can drive financial inclusion for women, something that banks are not even considering it. But we can target women in financial inclusion, and that could be our absolute advantage. Post are the tool for bridging digital divide for underserved population, like the retirees. They never used to have an account, but now with the post office, they're going to have one. And post provide the cheapest a scheme for remittances, which is something that we should all believe that we are very unique and our focus and strategy should be based on remittances for the customer that we serve. And based on World Bank statistics, the average cost is 5%. That's the reason why with very good partnership with MasterCard and Visa, we are issuing the first card targeting 800,000 customers, which is nearly a million. That makes a difference in terms of politics, by providing financial inclusion, in terms of revenues and profits for the company, in terms of scheme of uh, remittances, but far most in terms of brand and image and trust that we give to people by being transformed completely in a digital asset. Thank you. And please. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, could you reset the timer, please? Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, good morning. Uh, Analysis Mason, uh, we are strategy, regulation, and uh, policy consultants. I've worked for Analysis Mason for uh, 24 years, and in that time I've been uh, leading projects in the telecoms and postal and parcel sectors uh, across the world, uh, including in uh, uh, Africa, uh, the Middle East, uh, Asia, and Europe. Uh, so you'll all be aware of some of the new technologies which we are now seeing coming into the, to the pipeline, uh, and uh, the, many of those will be uh, on display uh, in the, the trade show uh, this week. Uh, some of those cover the, uh, uh, the demand side, where customers interact with uh, the services. Uh, many of these uh, new technologies cover the logistics pipeline, so robotics, uh, IoT, autonomous vehicles, and the like. And of course, holding all of this together is data and uh, data analytics. Uh, but I wanted to touch upon a few of the enabling technologies. So you won't see these technologies 
uh, in physical space. They are digital uh, advanced technologies. Um, and uh, just three of those technologies to, to touch on here. Uh, 5G mobile services. So uh, you'll be aware of 4G uh, mobile, and many countries now are licensing spectrum for 5G. Uh, this brings low latency, uh, reliable communications to mobile networks uh, and support for massive machine uh, networks. Private mobile networks are a development uh, uh, for um, uh, mobile services as well, where a private network can be established uh, that brings security uh, and uh, capacity guarantees. Um, but it can be costly to secure a private network uh, due to the uh, occupancy of uh, the, the capacity. And we'll talk a bit in a moment about blockchain, so distributed ledger technologies which replace the traditional database. These have uh, you know, various uh, detailed and important benefits, but they have some specific drawbacks, I think, which are, are relevant for the global postal industry. So, are they game-changing technologies? Well, robotics, IoT, uh, and autonomous vehicles, um, they will be supported in different ways by 5G and maybe by private networks. Um, they will radically uh, change the supply side of uh, our industry in um, advanced countries, country by country, uh, as those technologies are taken up. Uh, Blockchain uh, is useful and important for, for many data-driven applications, uh, and that can be uh, uh, used and, in, and invented in many different segments of, of, the, of the industry, uh, and also uh, niche applications. So these can be potentially game-changing for those areas of the sector. Um, but if we're talking about a global or a national solution, there are challenges to be overcome. So some of those benefits of blockchain uh, are highlighted here, um, and, and they sound very impressive. Um, they, they cover all the things you would want a uh, database or data technology to cover, security, convenience. Uh, in particular, it allows uh, uh, people to interact um, uh, with each other through um, a transparent and decentralized database. There isn't a centralized database that has to be managed. Uh, the, the, the blockchain distributed database um, provides the, uh, uh, the, the detail of whatever is happening to anybody who is using the technology to run their business or run their part of the network. Uh, it's also a very resilient system uh, because uh, it's a distributed technology by its, uh, uh, by its um, design uh, and would include, of course, uh, encryption and security aspects as well. And we've seen in the finance sector that it can significantly reduce the costs of running a global industry, uh, removing the previous high-cost intermediary of, uh, of international uh, banks. Uh, but there are some specific challenges uh, in, uh, in adopting blockchain and distributed technologies. And the main one, I think, for the, the postal and, and parcel and courier sector is technology itself. Um, it is a uh, technical and uh, um, uh, data uh, equipment uh, processing uh, intensive technology. And it has to be adopted uh, and implemented uh, completely within that part of uh, the ecosystem. Uh, by its design, you can't easily mix a blockchain technology with an old technology. It's designed to, to be the, um, the, the digital database technology at the heart of the application. Uh, we also need to think about regulation. Uh, uh, public adoption is interesting as well. We all know of uh, cryptocurrency speculation, and uh, some of us will be uh, embracing that speculation, and some will be wary of it. Uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, critical national infrastructure and national services, uh, we would want to be sure that, uh, that it is uh, well regulated and uh, uh, well adopted. There may be a question about energy consumption, although that, be, that is something which the technical teams can uh, potentially solve. Um, when it comes to implementation, it's primarily a switch between um, 
old style uh, digital database technologies which might be hosted on equipment or in the cloud to one which is distributed into the, um, the distributed processing space that runs blockchains. And that means the organizations that are moving to distributed technologies will be uh, uh, reducing their own um, digital uh, service uh, purchase, but they will be replacing it with development of applications, development of coding, uh, and development of the actual technologies which are then released uh, onto the distributed, um, distributed processing. Uh, I won't go into detail on this slide because we've seen some of the uh, applications mentioned already today, uh, but there are good examples of uh, blockchain solutions being developed in uh, postal logistics, and some of those are quite interesting because it allows potentially crypto stamps and digital stamps and maybe uh, crypto packaging, digital enabled packaging to be used to convey items all over the world without any need of a central database, and that system would be trusted and, uh, um, uh, uh, and, and would work seamlessly globally. Um, but the final question there is, uh, as I'm sure you're thinking, uh, will these be a global success? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ian. Uh, Ricardo, you want to pick up after him, yeah. please. Uh, um, so thank you, uh, first and foremost, uh, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here at UPU uh, World Leaders uh, Forum. Uh, thank you all for coming. My name is Ricardo Simões. I'm executive director of INATBA. INATBA is International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications. Um, uh, and INATBA is a global association of uh, companies, uh, public bodies, and uh, academics um, that uh, aim to pave the way to um, mass adoption of um, blockchain and DLT technologies, distributed ledger technologies. We are doing that by, um, by uh, through um, providing a multi-stakeholder uh, platform to discuss and to produce uh, leadership, uh, uh, thought leadership um, outputs to regulators and to policy makers, bringing industry, uh, industry players, private players, uh, and public bodies and academics into the mix and uh, coming up with this, the, the, um, uh, this, this extreme, extremely valuable content uh, in terms of, in terms of um, outputs. Uh, we are also so converging, uh, converging um, the, the, the industry into a sustainable development um, and one that is positive and, and constructive. Um, we um, we upskill and we try to foster upskill the education in, in terms of uh, digital of the digital space. Uh, in Atba is in a consortium, uh, a European consortium, uh, chase to monitoring and to provide. Um, uh, Skill, skill content on, on, digital, uh, on digital topics. Uh, and last but not least, um, uh, we, we, liaise, uh, we liaise and identify and liaise use cases uh, in, um, uh, uh, in, in, in blockchain uh, and provide them with the, the tools that they need to, to, to develop. So, um, about blockchain, I was a little bit uncertain of what what do you know about uh, about blockchain, um, and perhaps the the, the 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 most known part is actually cryptocurrencies, um, but um, blockchain can enable uh, the, the transfer and the storage of value and data in a very uh, secure um, manner that can be used um, in um, different, uh, di different sorts of, uh, of applications. For instance, um, regarding even some of the regulation that uh, 
uh, is, is being, being bring forward that will impact the industry in terms of SEGs. Um, measuring SEGs, uh, SEGs from um, water consumption or energy consumption into, um, in, different, in different countries, uh, bringing it to a, um, to, a, to a register, not in a declarative way, um, but um, in a quantitative way that can really measure uh, that, um, that information is perhaps one, one, one of the, the potential uh, use cases. But uh, also, we have um, blockchain is, is not... <coughs> Blockchain is actually being highly considered by the European by the European Commission, for instance, in the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure. That is a blockchain from the European uh, from the European Commission uh, that wants to uh, address different um, uh, public services uh, that can be converged into this non-fragmented by uh, every country um, uh, blockchain. So, um, uh, other, uh, other possibilities, um, other possibilities is, actually, is not a possibility. The fact that um, blockchain is here to stay um, is also the, the latest uh, one, of, one of the challenges that, that was mentioned in, in, in the presentation before was um, the, lack, the lack of regulation, uh, the lack of regulation around the financial and, 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 and the, the digital assets uh, and crypto assets uh, space. Um, the fact is, uh, this year, um, the, first, the first framework of, uh, of um, uh, regulating uh, Crypto asset service providers um, ask has come come out is is known as Mika uh, markets in crypto assets um, and um, it's perceived from the industry point as uh, the the global standard for um, uh, financial um, for uh, for uh, crypto finance let let's take that like this. And um, it will uh, bring forward the fact that industry, uh, industry players, all industry players um, can um, and, and should, um, it can allow for new players, uh, and that's thinking of uh, a, a post, to enter in the space of providing uh, crypto uh, services. So this uh, is what I want to say. I welcome all the questions. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have experience on the post, on the post sector uh, per se, but I will be around and, uh, uh, and um, welcome all, all the questions that you. Thank, thank you very much. Perfect. <clears throat> so just one small thing before we, we start with the discussion and questions. If you have a question and you want to submit it via Swapcard, that is possible, as I said, but you have to write the question into the right session. So otherwise I can't see it. So apparently there were before questions, but in the wrong session. So <laughs> um, then, then they won't pop up here. Um, let me start with one question. I mean, you have touched upon it, um, se several speakers here. I, I mean, you started with explaining there have been so many countries already doing something in the area of blockchain, for example testing, pilots, even starting in 2015 and so, so quite impressive. You haven't said whether anything was implemented then, so it was, it, it was just pilot, but whether it has been implemented, we don't know. The question is, we're talking so much about blockchain and those huge opportunities, and you know you see those lists with all those bullet points where you see many, many advantages and you think it's a no-brainer, you do it. It's, it, it. it's replacing so many old technology, it's so much faster. But quite frankly, we don't see so much of the, of the output. We don't see so many <coughs> postal companies that have implemented a blockchain technology for different kinds of services in those logistic streams in the supply chain. We see something here and there, but not in a vast sense as, as why one might expect. Why is that so? Who wants to say why is that so? 
perhaps, perhaps not in the sense of, of the core service of the post, but we, we see, we see um, growing um, adoption of, for instance, NFTs and stamps uh, as the NFTs collectibles. Uh, that is gaining uh, a lot of traction. We have uh, in, inside of the association, we have uh, La Poste and we have uh, Emirates Post that uh, have a very uh, ambitious um, uh, NFT um, uh, uh, goals um, uh, using NFTs as a form of interface uh, to, to provide uh, uh, collectibles in terms of, uh, of stamps. Uh, and uh, quite recently, yeah, uh, actually last week, I was uh, in, in Liechtenstein, and I heard of, uh, and I heard, uh, and I, I talked to a, a, a company uh, that is providing service for for the Liechtenstein Post. Uh, that is all about actually providing a a, f a digital twin of the physical stamp, of the physical stamp that can be at the same time. Traced and 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 um, bring on all the all the story and the the, the traceability um, of of the of the same. So uh, there are some uh, there are some um, uh, solutions that are already being implemented, and we are seeing lots in, in terms of that. So um, I think Bernard, that um, that's that's a very interesting question, and and we need to look at it from the perspective of what both our colleagues said here. I mean, the, the first thing to consider is that you have to start with pilots when you get a new technology. You cannot just jump in, spend billions of dollars, and find out that, okay, maybe not. Um, so we do see a laundry list of different use cases that were explored by, by Pulse, by, by experimentation, by doing pilots. Um, probably the most mature case, as Ricardo mentioned, is in crypto philately. Um, you have Austria Post, you have other Pulse, you have Ritz Post just going into it as well. Um, La Poste France is doing it in terms of logistics. Swiss Post is doing it for logistics. So there are fragmented um, uses of it. But as, as, as our colleague mentioned, perhaps this is not as yet a game-changing, proven technology that calls for mass adoption. Um, I think we are at a cusp where we haven't reached the tipping point yet. Um, people are looking at it. There are potential uses of it, but it hasn't reached a stage where it's like, okay, yeah, we are all going to do this, right? It will get there. Um, so I, th I, I personally think we are in the early stages of actually taking um, these interesting new innovative technologies and trying to bolster them on to a number of different businesses, including the postal business. And, and, and I think the robust, um, granular, implementable, and scalable business cases are out there um, and, and yet to be profit. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, th th there's two parts of it. I, either it's a, uh, a new revenue generating service um, and, and, and for that uh, you can see a more sort of standalone business case. It will come down to the business case, as you say. When the proof of concept is there, then you need a real business case and someone needs to adopt it. If it's revenue generating for a new service, then it's standalone. I think the harder challenge um, and the thing which will take much longer is where it's a cost saving because it's right in the heart Back of the industry. Yeah. And um, there are many cost challenges already just in the existing traditional um, segments. And so the effort and the thinking needed to say, okay, well, actually this new technology can allow us to take out all of that and replace it with this, uh, this blockchain DLT solution. Um, needs a very large sort of critical mass of a business case. So we might see it in places like, as you just mentioned, the, the European uh, converged public services area. So maybe someone like uh, IPC or a group of developed posts will get together and say, right, we can do this and we can slice this out of our business and save our cost. Um, but that's the much harder question is to, is to use it to um, reduce costs in the industry. I can comment a little bit on that, but based basically on history. I'm very fan of the history of, uh, of the post, how it was created, back to, dating back to 2,500 years before Christ, in Egypt and then in Roman Empire, so everything was about communication. So even right now, when we speak about cryptocurrency or crypto stamp and stuff, 
we are targeting a very small and limited quantity of customers which believes and lives in this bubble of dreams where everything is digital and everything is like within the blockchains. While our customers itself are not targeted by the concept of blockchain, both in terms of security and in terms of touchable. We want things to be touchable. The everything in the world right now, we, because we live in a momentum of financial crisis, we live next door to the war, so nothing is safe. Even this digital thing and this game changing of moving into the blockchain, it's not 100% safe. We saw many historical data and point of view of how the system was evolving because of some national crisis, which belongs to the security, to the war, to the financial crisis. It cost a lot. Right now we are facing energy crisis as well. So blockchain, one of the main points of them is energy. So who is going to pay for this energy? So we never know. You see, all those business cases are within five years. They change completely the model in which they operate. While the post is still the same, even though we date back 2,500 years before Christ. And that's a big difference. Yeah, and what you just said, that there is this risk um, jumping. We're jumping into new technologies, yeah. and it's going extremely fast. And there is a question here that came in in this respect, um, which was kind of saying or asking, how can we best protect ourselves and our customers, taking into account this uh, cybersecurity risk uh, that, that we are facing with uh, the, this rapid transformation to, to digital. How can we protect ourselves and our customers? Who wants to? Well, I mean, um, <clears throat> I think Paul uh, talked about our cybersecurity program and, and what the UPU does to help the post around it. Um, but again, risks are inherent in any business. Um, if you go full old school money, and, and I used to run microfinance banks, so I, I can tell you about <laughs> cash management, huh? um, and, and carrying sacks of cash to villages in Kabul and, and outside Afghanistan, uh, yeah, it's, it's not the safest of business. Um, there are different levels of risks, and us as institutions, and us as stewards of public trust, and the post as enablers of development and human growth, we have to ensure it, right? It is inherent upon us to ensure that we provide this level of trust and security towards our clients to make sure that whether you have a debit card, whether you have cash in your hand, or whether it's an ether, it's in your wallet, it's all secure. The post provides you with that security. Okay. Uh, Graham, you had a question so from the audience. Uh, third row, please. Close to. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Graham Lee. Um, yeah, Anissa, uh, my question was to you. I, I thought it was very impressive, your, your presentation, and particularly what you said about the 800,000 um, uh, people that would be effectively included in financial services. But what I was wondering about that was that I just did a quick, quick sort of calculation, thinking if, if each of those customers has 100 euros on their card, then that's 80 million euros. What, what is um, Albania Post going to do with that money to, A, in one sense, to protect it, but, but B, to actually utilize the money? Is it something that um, the post will utilize, or, or will that actually go effectively into uh, uh, government uh, coffers? Okay. So we learned from the mistakes of other operating companies while they launched the same product as us. So in the first piloting phase, we are uh, entering into an agreement with most of the banks in Albania. So they are going to provide all the necessary tools and security safety tools for the product to be launched safely. And the money that comes for social insurance scheme is part of the government money. So we want to assure that they are treated fairly. There is risk uh, upon the business case. Uh, and that at the same time, we are offering the opportunity to everyone to get the shares based on the contract that they had before. Uh, based on the several research that we have done, uh, we had problems like with Ireland. When she went uh, through Wirecard, and Wirecard then got bankrupt, so millions of customers were left without the account. So we couldn't take the same risks, and that's the reason why we decided to 
be in a joint cooperation with the banking sector. Mm -hmm. I've seen there was another hand raised. Can we bring the microphone? <clears throat> Is there after this one another question? Okay, one more. Okay, <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, I'm Alexander from Post Plus. I'm uh, sorry that I can't uh, ask any uh, questions about blockchain and modern stuff. So uh, probably something back to the basics. Um, Anissa, I would like to make a reference to your presentation when you told that most of the postal operators would now have a mobile application. Did I understand correctly? We have a mobile uh, application that provides the service. But did you say that most of the posts would have it already? The? Most of the posts would yeah, have. Yeah, mo most okay. of the posts, yeah. I think that most of the mo operators here already have an app. But, which but then I, I started thinking about the functionality. Yeah, I, I have come across a lot of the postal applications that would provide you tracking, some limited functionality. But what about the basics? Uh, what do you think, how many, or if anybody would have a statistics, how many other mobile applications that would support sending a parcel, filling in the label, maybe taking a picture of the content, and all this stuff? That's my question. If you think about, okay, the application is basically for financial sector and we are offering a one-stop shop for financial services and also just a view on terms of tracking the parcel. If you believe that there are no apps in terms of parcel mail logistics, that's true because that is basically dealing with sensitive data and data protection, which is something that we cannot give the rights even through a different app and user he wants to. To, to make it. Okay. So that's... Briefly, my question. And also in terms of blockchain, and also in terms of data security and stuff, you always should think about the opposite, the risk that you are taking by moving to another platform. Like even though nowadays, most of the people are uh, going through blockchains, NFTs and stuff, they are buying even uh, properties which believes in the air and stuff next to the famous Hollywood uh, people and uh, the rest, but you should understand that based on some statistics that I got from construction companies, we are building each month a city equal to New York. So even though people are buying online, that doesn't mean that we are not going to have real estate going on from the other side. So we should find a balance that could target necessarily our customers, basic customers, and as I said in the presentation, most of the operators are targeting a customer level which is above 45, while the application is just for retaining the youngster, so making it more attractive. So at least they go through the post office once in a lifetime. Paul, you want to comment? I Maybe yeah. just so that the camera sees you as well, maybe you step forward if it's a re reply as well. <laughs> Okay, so uh, just to respond to the question in terms of the number of uh, postal operators that have mobile apps, uh, the UPU does regular research on um, the uh, capability of digital services. So our latest research indicates that 45% um, of postal companies around the world have a mobile app, uh, and those mobile apps vary in functionality from just simple track and trace all the way through to super apps. Uh, and mega apps. Some of you may be familiar with this concept of a super or mega app where now you combine a range of services, financial services, logistics services, government identity services, um, parcel uh, delivery services. So, for example, in Egypt, they have a wonderful um, super app and I'd encourage everybody to look at uh, the developments in super apps where the whole range of postal services and related services are available on a mobile app. Sorry. No, thank you, Paul. Are you, the microphone, I, I can take only one more question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I see several hands up. Hmm? I, 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 okay, two more questions, but they need to be short, okay? <laughs> Not long questions. One here in the front, please. The microphone, we need it here in the front. 
But having good oh, questions in the back. is... Uh... <laughs> so it's all in the back. I hope it's okay. Okay, it is okay. It is okay. It is okay. So uh, we won't have lunch today, but please ask the question. <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, Michael Dorner is my name uh, from various systems and various card in Vienna, Austria. Uh, we're a security printer, uh, ID cards, stamps, and specifically crypto stamps. And I have a question. So we've uh, manufactured these crypto stamps in the past for some of the countries that have been mentioned already today. And uh, the panel in the front has mentioned that the technology uh, can be used for so many different things, like track and trace, financial services. NFT stamps is just one visible solution, right? Um, but the thing is that we've always been using different chains, different blockchains, different smart contracts, all of these things, and we've been asked from all the countries, like, which one to use, and so on and so on. And I think there's, there would be a need to standardize um, blockchain technology for the postal services, like whatever service that may be. And my question is, what would it take, or what is necessary, or can the UPU do this, um, to actually set up um, a standard for all of these things just for the postal uh, uh, services? Okay, who wants to, to answer to this question? You Maybe. <laughs> wait, 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 here is Walter. <laughs> We're talking about standardization. Maybe. And, and, and then Sala, and then we get, go to the other questions. Uh, but Walter, may, maybe you stand up so that also the camera can see you. <clears throat> Sorry, yes, you can hear me. Uh, the answer is very simple and uh, very straightforward. Not only on the global field of the UPU this is possible, standardization, of course. Please welcome into the consultative committee, yeah, because then you can sit there and help to standardize. Yeah? Um, and also, liaison, of course, with the Europeans. Yeah, there is the next mandate coming, and I'm also the chairman of the digital postal services there. Standardization of blockchain and crypto stamps is high of our, our agenda. So, yes, the UPU, welcome here, is the perfect <laughs> forum for that. Thank you. Sally, you wanted to say something as well? Yes, to add on to um, mm -hmm. what Walter is saying. Of course, um, setting standards in the postal sector is one of the core normative work of the UPU. Um, However, what we try to do is we try to be platform agnostic, um, and, and the bulk of our work is in ensuring interoperability between systems. So at the UPU, when we set standards, it is really um, to set a, a global framework that can be utilized by non-monopolistic operators, right? Um, and that is what we will be looking at at, at a platform level uh, on our side. And, and if you look at some of the standards that we've set for addressing, for, for all of the other work that is happening, electronic data interchange, um, it, it's meant to be done in a way that benefits um, all levels of operators around the world and all technology providers. And, and we ensure that we do not dictate one chain over the other um, as a UN body and as a normative body, we do not go down a path where we say, okay, this is it. Uh, we instead set standards that is um, interoperable for all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe we can jump to the last two questions, the ones that I promised that we'll take, but we do quickly. One here and one there, please. Whoever wants to start. Okay, the mic goes there. Yeah, so. awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'll <clears throat> keep it brief, uh, mindful of time. Um, my question partly is already asked, uh, blockchain, um, the application, uh, by the way, I'm Suhail Chaudhary from Saudi Post Logistics, just by way of introduction. Um, the blockchain, we talked about crypto, we talked about cryptocurrency uh, and stamps. From a supply chain point of view, where this technology has been tried or is most useful is from a trust and avoiding counterfeit in supply chain. Uh, in my past roles with the New Zealand Post, we have tried that technology successfully, but I think the cost is quite prohibitive in terms of building decentralized systems. But where I wanted to comment on from a UPU point of view, yes, we talk about standardization. The products which underpin global supply chain, they are largely built around the concept of UPU. 
and the products are not flexible. So I'll leave it there and we can talk later on. Mm -hmm. uh, if we talk about digital innovation and encrypting the, each part of supply chain in a way the, where the ledger or whatever the pockets of data can operate uh, and trust can be built, then the innovation in our core product sets which underpin UPU needs to be uh, enhanced. And that is a little bit beyond the consultative committee's role. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. So may we go over here for the last question. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Uh, Nevila Beliri from Albanian Post, Director of Financial Services. I have this question for Mr. Khan. Uh, in U.S., we have seen advanced model of payment and transfers, national and international, like PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, many of them. And they have somehow diminished the role of uh, financial postal services, and they still keep growing. Is uh, postal operator market in Europe and other countries threatened by U.S. trends or by these global payment platforms? Well, I mean, um, you need to consider what your core business is um, in terms of financial services. I do not think that the core financial services of a post is to provide mortgages or, or agricultural lending, just, just to give you an example. Now, if you consider that the post plays a, a role in bringing inclusive financial services to society, our last survey is showing that over 2 billion postal accounts exist in the world. That's a 40% increase from what we saw last time. You know, so it is super interesting for us to see that these accounts are actually growing. And if you look at the size of these accounts, they're really small. And that tells you who your core customers are. Now, cross-border remittances is always a tricky issue given national policies and, and national regulations. But when you look at domestic remittances, the post plays a huge role in, 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 in enabling that. It's super cheap, it's super accessible, as, as yes. you mentioned yourself, the post is everywhere. The granularity, the capillarity of the post in, in remote rural areas cannot be matched by a commercial bank, and that is a postal business. Should you be going into digital financial services? Yes. Would you become the next PayPal? Probably not. You need to mm -hmm. understand your missions, your market, and where you want to go, right? Do you want to become the next Visa or MasterCard? Probably not. Um, do you want to partner with them to provide the services that your customers demand? Yes. So are these apps um, and, and financial um, platforms a threat to the post? I would argue they're potential partners. You, you ought not to go into commercial spaces, in my opinion, um, where you would have to spend billions of dollars in R&D when you can partner with them, which is exactly the point of this part, uh, panel, and you leapfrog all of that R&D, all of that investment, all of the technological um, innovation that comes through, and you use it to your benefit. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much. We have to close the session here, I think, for obvious reasons. Um, thank, thank you very much, really, for the great uh, participation from the audience uh, through through uh, the <clears throat> web chat and also here, here in the room. I think that's really good that we have this discussion. I mean, we all agree that, uh, that uh, really digital transformation, new technologies and all these things, we have to go forward, 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 and it doesn't stop, but it's complex. And, uh, and, and I think what we have also seen is, yes, there are not only the security aspects to it, there's also the, the security in knowing what we are doing and that everything in the, in the environment is safe and, and predictable for users. Um, so standardization and questions like these are extremely important. Um, so thank you very much for the panelists for discussing this with us. Thank you. And now the bad news is, since we ran a bit over time and came back from the coffee break late as well, um, please stay in the room. Uh, we make a break just for five minutes uh, so that uh, the new panelists can get mic'd and uh, the others can give back their microphones. And we start right away uh, with, uh, with the next session. Yeah. Thank you very much. And because we are a game-changing panelist, I believe that during the lunch it would be great to see your opinions, not only on blockchain, but everything dealing with the post. Absolutely, right, yeah. perfect.